my dear UGC aspirants in our last video we have discussed around 50 MCQs from last year question papers now today as well I have brought few more such question answers for you all so before we start our video of today let me tell you that we have a whatsapp group where we discuss all the MCQs if you wish you can join us to learn in a better and more efficient way so here we will begin with today's video let's start question number one the Old Testament consists of dash books your options are 35 option B 39 option C 36 and option D 38 your answer is option B 39 let's see the highlighter the Old Testament contains 39 Protestant 46 Catholic or more Orthodox and other books the Old Testament consists of many distinct books from various authors produced over a period of centuries Christians traditionally divided the Old Testament into four sections. The first one is the first one is the first five books or Pentateuch or Torah. Second one is the history books telling the history of the Israelites from their conquest of Canaan to their defeat and exile in Babylon. Third one is the poetic and wisdom books dealing in different forms which questions of good and evil in the world and the book of the biblical prophets warning of the consequences of turning away from God. Next question. Viola is a character taken from the dramas of Option A, Shakespeare. Option B, Marlowe. Option C, Ben Johnson. And Option D, Webster. Your answer is Option A, that is William Shakespeare. Let's understand details about the answer. Viola is a character taken from the dramas of Shakespeare. Drama name is Twelfth Night or What You Will. It is a romantic comedy believed to have been written around 1601 to 1602. The play centers on the twins Viola and Sebastian who are separated in shipwreck. Viola, a shipwrecked young woman who disguises herself as a page named Cesario. Question number three. In book One Fairy Queen, Red Rose Knight symbolizes the virtue of option A, truth, option B, bravery, option C, holiness, option C, option D, chivalry. And your option C, that is holiness, is the answer. Red Cross Knight, it is a fictional character protagonist of book one of the fairy queen fairy queen which is written by edmund spencer in the year 1590 an epic poem by the writer the red cross knight represents the virtue of holiness as well as saint george and the anglian church question number four Shakespeare borrowed idea for as you like it from option a robert green's orlando furioso option b thomas lodge rosalind euphius golden legacy option c george pele's world wife's tale the old wife's tale option d thomas nash the anatomy of absurdities 
option B, Thomas Lodge, Rosalind Euphius, Golden Legacy is the answer. Shakespeare's main source for this play was a pastoral romance written by Thomas Lodge, produced in 1590, uh, called Rosalind. Interestingly, an introductory remark in Lodge's text is, if you like it. So, and this seems like an obvious inspiration for Shakespeare's title. As you like it is a pastoral comedy. As you like it, first performed in 1603. The number of Bacon's essays in the third edition Option A 52, Option B 56, Option C 58, Option D 54. Your answer 58, that is Option C, is the correct answer. Let's focus on the highlighters. Francis Bacon was born on 22nd January 1561. He died on 9th April 1626. Also known as Lord Verulam, was an English philosopher and a statesman who served as Attorney General and as Lord Chancellor of England. While the original edition included 10 essays, a much enlarged edition, second edition appeared in 1612 with 38 essays. Another, under the title Essays or Councils, Civils and Moral was published in 15, sorry, 1625 with 58 essays. Friends, please keep these numbers in mind. Question number six. Spencer dedicated Shefford's calendar to Shakespeare, Marlowe, Ben Johnson, Sir Philip Sidney. Option D, Sir Philip Sidney is the correct answer. The highlighters. The Shepherd's Calendar, published in 1579, the term sarcasm is first recorded in English in Shakespeare's poem. It is an epic poem. The Shepherd's Calendar is a poem that consists of 12 eulogues. Each eclogue is named after a different month which represents the turning of seasons. An eclogue is a short pastoral poem that is in the form of a dialogue or soliloquy. The Shepherd's Calendar was dedicated to Sir Philip Sidney, earning Spencer a mention in Sidney's Apology for Poetry in the year 1595. Let's move to the next question, question number seven. The Comedy of Errors is a comedy of disguises. Comedy of disguises, mistaken identity, causeless jealousy, or misunderstandings. Your answer mistaken identity is the correct option. The Comedy of Errors is one of the William Shakespeare's early plays. It is his shortest play, one of his most farcical comedies, with a major part of humor coming from slapstick and mistaken identity is addition to pun and wordplay. The Comedy of Errors is, along with the Tempest, sorry, Tempest, one of only two Shakespearean plays to observe the Aristotelian principles of unity of time. That is, the event of a play should occur, stage, screen and musical theatre numerous times worldwide. Set in the Greek city of Ipsus, the comedy of errors tells the story of two sets of identical twins who were accidentally separated at birth. It is an 
It is a five-act play, written in 1589 to 94. First published in the first folio of 1623 from Shakespeare's manuscript. It was based on Menacre by Plotus with additional material from Plotus Amphitrio and the story of Apollonius of Tyre. Let's move ahead. Question number eight. The first folio edition of Shakespeare's plays was pl printed in 1620, 1616, 1625 and 1623. And the correct options, 1623. William Shakespeare's comedies, histories and tragedies is a collection of plays by William Shakespeare published in 1623, commonly referred to by modern scholars as the first folio. It is considered one of the most influential work books ever published. The second folio is the 1632 edition of the collected plays of William Shakespeare. It follows the first folio of 1623. The third folio of Shakespeare's works was printed in 1663 and a second issue reappeared in 1664, adding Pericles and six other plays. Abandon all hopes. You who enter here, what is the source of these lines? This is asked in question number 9. And your options are, option A, Milton's Paradise Lost, Milton's Samson Agonists, Option D, that is Divine Comedy or Chorus, Arts, Poetica. Your answer, option C, is correct, that is Divine Comedy. The phrase has borrowed from that is Divine Comedy, written in 1320. The phrase has been borrowed from that is Divine Comedy. This work was written on 1620, sorry, 1320. It means to abandon all your hopes. It is said to have inscribed at the entrance of hell. The phrase is translated from Italian sentence. It was coined by Allegory Date in his famous epic. The phrase is used the last line of the second stanza. And it is simile. Question number 10. Essay on man by poet Pope has dash poetical epistles. Your options are 2, 1, 3, 4. And option D, 4 is the correct answer. It was written by Alexander Pope, which was published in the year 1733 to 1734. It is dedicated to Henry St. John who was first Viscount Bolingbroke. It is written in heroic couplet, comprises of four epistles. Pope began work on it in 1729 and had finished the first three by 1731. They appeared in early 1733 with the fourth episode published the following year. The Wasteland by T. S. Eliot is dedicated to Jane Mesfield, option B, Ajra Pound, option C, Onwell, and option D, Somerest Morgan. Your option B is the correct answer, Ajra Pound. Let's see why is this a correct answer. The Wasteland by T. S. Eliot was published in the years 1922, first in London in the Criterion in the month of October. Next in New York City in the Dial in the November month. And finally in book form, the Footnotes by Eliot. It has 433 lines and it has five 
part form is dedicated to fellow poet Ezra Pound. It is 20th century's extremely important work. Next question is question number 12. Which novel of Hemingway gives the message, man is not made for defeat? A man can be destroyed but not defeated. Option A, man without woman. Option B, the sun also rises. Option C, to have and have nots. Option D, the old man in the sea. And your answer is the old man in the sea. Let's see the highlighters of the answer. The Old Man and the Sea is written by Ernest Hemingway. It is a short heroic novel which was published in the year 1952 on 1st September. It is an epic and uh, it is a struggle between an old seasoned, seasoned fisherman and the greatest catch of his life. 84 days returned empty-handed. Protagonist of the novel is Santiago, aged man. Question number 13. Raja Rao's The Serpent and the Rope was awarded Nobel Prize, Sahitya Academy Award, Hothronden Prize or none of these. The Serpent and the Rope is Raja Rao's second novel, first published in 1960 by John Murray. It is written in an autobiographical style. The novel deals with the concepts of existence, reality and fulfillment of one's capabilities. The protagonist Ramaswamy's thought process in the novel is said to be influenced by Vedantic philosophy and Adi Sankara's non-dualism. It also deals with the problems of immigrants and immigration. The novel won the Sahitya Academy Award in 1964. Question number 14. Who has been called the wild humorist of planes by San Francisco? Option A. O'Neill. Option B. Henry James, Option C, Mark Twain, Option D, Emily Dickinson. Sorry, Emily Dickens. Samuel Langshon. Samuel Langhorn Clemens, known by his pen name Mark Twain. American, he is an American writer, humorist, entrepreneur, publisher, and lecturer. The father of American literature, which is called by William Faulkner. His pen name is Mark Twain. Jose Thomas Jefferson Snodgrass. He was born on November 30th, 1835 in Florida, Missouri. United States. He died on April 21st in the year 1910 at the age of 74 at Reading, Connecticut, United States. Friends, in this question we need to keep in mind his full name or his real name because in maximum uh, questions related to literature we know Mark Twain as his pen name only okay his real name is Samuel Langhorn Clemens question number 15 who was the winner of the first Sahitya Academy Award Option A, R.K. Narayan. Option B, Raja Rao. Option C, Mulk Rajanand. Option D, none of the above. Here, it is R.K. Narayan who won Sahitya Academy Award in the year 1954. Therefore, option A is correct. 
ऑप्शन सॉरी पॉइंट टू टोटल साहित्य अकादमी अवार्ड देर आर टोटल सिक्सटी साहित्य अकादमी अवार्ड लास्ट साहित्य अकादमी अवार्ड विनर इज शशि थरूर इन नाइनटीन सॉरी टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्सटीन द फिगर द स्ट्रीम्स इन वेव्स ऑफ सिल्वर रोल्ड एंड ऑन देर बैंक्स अगस्ट रोज इन गोल्ड अगस्ट इज एन ओ मेटफो ऑप्शन ए सिमिली ऑप्शन बी ऑप्शन सी एल्यूशन एंड ऑप्शन डी हाइपोबोल क्यों आंसर is allusion that is option c let's understand what is an allusion allusion is a brief and indirect reference to a person place thing or idea of historical cultural literary or political significance it does not describe in details the person or thing to which it refers it is just a passing comment and a writer expects the reader to possess enough knowledge to spot the allusion and grasp its importance in a text augusta is an allusion to augusta gino bantia the name of the romans used for the city of london according to the university of toronto next question is question number 17 arthur miller wrote a screenplay especially for his wife marlene monroe which is it options are option a the misfits a view from the bridge after the fall all my sons option d so here your answer is option a that is the misfits let's see the highlighters arthur miller full name is arthur as miller he is an american playwright born on october 17th 1915 in new york us he died on february 10th 2005 in rose roxbury sorry connecticut next highlighter is miller wrote a screenplay the misfit for his second wife the actress Marilyn Monroe they were married from 1956 to 1961 the misfits released in 1961 was directed by john huston let's move to the next question question number 18 who was awarded pulitzer award for poetry four times your options are option a walt whitman option b robert frost option c emerson option d emily dickinson and your answer is option b robert frost robert frost won the pulitzer prize for poetry four times from 1924 to 1943 let's move to the next question question number 20 elegy written in a country churchyard can loosely be divided into dash groups in stanzas and your options are 6 4 5 and 7 The correct answer is option C five. Let's see the highlighters. Five groups of stanzas. First group stanza fifteen. Explore the landscape, the country graveyard, and its sounds, terrain, flora and fauna, and most importantly, the physical and metaphorical style on which Gray's mediation will play out. Second group. Stanzas of six and seven, briefly but emotionally describe the familial and rustic activities that the rude forefathers can no longer enjoy. Third group, stanza eight one eight, the most sustained discussion of death as the great equalizer of social class. Gray explores the contrast between the wealthy class classes and the common laborers, all of whom are made equal in death. Fourth group, stanzas one nine two three, 
center on the villages deceased rustic people and their inherent values as objects of memory the last group fifth group stanzas 2432 includes the speaker's own epitaph and describes the speaker's mediation on how his poetic life will be remembered question number 21 which of the following statements is correct about elegy written in the country churchyard your first statement is it is written in quatrains and the last three stanzas are printed in italic type and given the title the epitaph statement b the poem was written in the at the end of the augustan age and at the beginning of beginning of the romantic period and the poem has characteristics associated with both literary periods when thomas gray was writing the poem the world was going through a period of intellectual development that thinkers of the time dubbed the age of enlightenment statement d elegies can take any poetic form but gray uses the elegiac stanza which came into style during his time and which he perfected now here your options are option a b is correct option option b c is correct c option all are correct or d a is correct here your answer is option c all are correct let's move to the next question question number 22 which of the following lines has an example of alliteration from gray's elegy the curfew tells the nail of parting day option b the plowman homeward plods his weary way c option and leaves the world to darkness and to me. Option D. Molest her ancient solitary reign. Here, option B is the correct answer. The plowman homeward plods his very way. Allit Let's see the highlighters. Alliteration is the literary device here. The repetition of usually initial consonant sounds in two or more neighboring words or syllables are repeated and here we find the same in option b let's see the question number 23 which of the following statements is correct about the seasons option a the seasons was possibly the most popular poem written in the 18th century and was profoundly influential not only in description on description verse but in odd and a variety of other literary kinds next statement b the seasons was the first sustained nature poem in english and concludes with a hymn to nature option c autumn consists of 1270 1270 lines in 1730 in the 1746 edition of the seasons thompson expanded the poem to a total of 1373 lines now your options are option a all are correct option b a is correct and option c b statement is correct and your answer is option a all the statements are correct let's move to the next option Le next question sorry Windsor forest is an or a loco descriptive poem option b narrative poem Option C, descriptive poem. Number D, epic poem. And here your answer is local descriptive poem. That is option A. Let's see the highlighters. Topographical poetry or local descriptive poetry is a journal of poetry that describes and often praises a landscape or place. Topographical meaning relating to the arrangement or accurate representation of the physical features of an area windsor forest reflects british history and politics within its 432 lines example of topographical poetry john dyer's gronger hill 
one seven two six or two seven. Matthew Arnold's The Scholar Gypsy praised the Oxfordshire countryside. W. H. Auden's The Praise of Limestone used a limestone landscape and as an allegory. Last question from this set. Who is the friend of Pope? Joseph Conrad, John Milton, John Keats, Jonathan Swift. And your answer is D, that is Jonathan Swift. Let's see the highlighters. Tory writers, Jonathan Swift, Thomas Parnell, John Arbuthnot, who together formed the satirical Scribius Club. The aim of the club was to satirize ignorance and pedantry in the form of the fictional scholar Martinus Scribblers. In another party, that is Whig writers, we find Joseph Addison and Richard Steele. Hello friends, I welcome you all on Best Notes Tutorials. Here we are discussing MCQs on everyday basis. We have completed till now day 1, 2, 3's MCQs. The questions which were asked in previous years, those are going to be extremely important. So let's begin with day 4's set of questions. Question number one. Which poem of William Cooper begin, begins with the suggestion of Lady Austin who asked him to write a poem on the sofa? Your options are The Task, The Ballad of John Gilpin, Option C, both A and B and Option D, none of the above. So here your answer is Option A, The Task. Let's see the highlighters. A six book blank verse poem. The poem has its origin in a rather peculiar story. Copo, a man of a strong religious background and fervent personal belief, is challenged by a noble woman to write a poem. She challenges him to make a sofa, a rather mundane sitting object, the main theme of the poem. It is third person narration. And this was published in the year 1785, usually seen as his supreme achievement. Its six books are called The Sofa, The Timepiece, The Garden, The Winter Evening, The Winter Morning Walk and The Winter Walk at Afternoon. Book publisher was Joseph Johnson beginning with a mock Miltonic passage on the origin of the sofa it develops into a discursive mediation on the blessings of nature the retired life and religious faith with attacks on slavery blood spot fashionable frivolity lukewarm clergy and french despotism among other things Question number two, In Memoriam is an elegiac poem on the death of Option A, Arthur Hug Claw, Option B, Edward King, Option C, Arthur Hallam, Option D, none of the above. So here your option goes, correct option goes, Option C, that is Arthur Hallam. Let's see the highlighters. In Memoriam, A.H.H. -H is a poem by the British poet Alfred Lord Tennyson, which was published in the year 1850. It is a requiem for the poet's beloved Cambridge friend Arthur Henry Hallam, who died suddenly of a cerebral hemorrhage in Vienna in 1833 at the age 22. It contains some of Tennyson's most accomplished lyrical work and is an usually sustained exercise in lyrical lyric verse it is widely considered to be one of the greatest poems of the 19th century the original title of the poem was 
the way of the soul and this might give an idea how the poem is an account of all Tennyson's thoughts and emotions as he grieves over the death of a close friend. In memoriam is written in four line A B B A stanza of iambic tetrameter. The poem is divided into 133 cantos including the prologue and epilogue. In which place Shaw depicts the theme of eternal triangle? A pigma option A, Pygmalion, option B, Candida, option C, Doctor's Dilemma, option D, the Apple Cart. So here your answer is option B, that is Candida. Candida, a comedy by playwright George Bernard Shaw. It is written in 1894. It was first published in 1898 as part of his play Pleasant. Candida comes second in the collection. Please Pleasant is the subtitle A Mystery, an anti romantic play and a drama of ideas. It is the story of eternal triangle that Shaw deals with in an unconventional way. The plot presents a man, Reverend James Mavor Morrell, his wife Candida, and a poet, Eugene Marchbanks, involved in the eternal triangle of love. Question number four. Who got Nobel Prize for Literature for Lord of Flies? This famous work was written by William Golding. Therefore, the answer is option A. Even then, let's see the options. Option A, William Golding. Option B, Belzebub. Option C, Milton. And option D, Shakespeare. Here, the answer is William Golding. So, William Gerald Golding was a British novelist, playwright, and poet. He was born on 19 September 1911, Newquay, Cornwall, England. He died on 19th June 1993 at the age of 81 and uh, at Piranarwath, Cornwall, England. He was awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature for Lord of Flies in 1983. He was awarded the Booker Prize for Rights of for Rites of Passage in 1980. He was a fellow of the Royal Society of Literature. And here, Lord of Flies is an allegorical novel. Published in 17 September, 17 September 1954, the book focuses on a group of British boys stranded on an uninhabited island and their disastrous attempt to govern themselves. Themes include the tension between rational and emotional reactions and between morality and immorality. Next question, question number five. The absurd theater began in Germany, Ireland, Norway, and France. The answer is France. Let's see the highlighters. The term theater of absurd was coined by the critic Martin Esleem in 1961 to describe the work of a number of primary, primarily European playwrights, mostly written in 1950s and 1960s. The word derived from an essay from the French philosopher Albert Camus, the absurd theatre began in France. Question number six, Keats and Demion has option A, 200 lines, sorry, 2,000 lines, option B, 5,000 lines, option C, 3,000 lines, and option D, 4,000 lines. And your answer is option D, 4,000 lines. Endymion is a poem by John Keats, first published in 1818 by Samuel Taylor Coleridge. Sorry, 
Taylor and Hesse of Fleet Street in London, John Keats dedicated this poem to the late poet Thomas Chatterton. The poem begins with the line, A thing of beauty is a joy forever. Here, rhymic couplets in iambic pentameter is also known as heroic couplet. Keats based the poem on the Greek myth of Endymion, the shepherd beloved, beloved of the moon goddess Selene. The poem is divided into four books, each approximately 1000 lines long. Question number seven. When was the unfinished dream from Kubla Khan published? Option A, 1810, Option B, 1816, Option C, 1820, and Option D, 1821. Here, Option B is the correct answer, 1816. Kubla Khan or A Vision in a Dream. It's a fragment. A fragment is a poem written by Samuel Taylor Coleridge, completed in 1797, published in 1816. The poem is divided into three irregular stanzas which move loosely between different times and places. Here, rhyme scheme varies from stanza to stanza. Question number eight. Who is afraid of Virginia Woolf? Is written by Tennis Williams, Arthur Miller, Edward Alvey, and none of the above. Here, the answer is C, Edward Alvey. Let's see the highlighters. Who is Afraid of Virginia Woolf is a play by Edward Albee, first staged in October 13, 1962. It examines the complexities of marriage of middle-aged couple Martha and George. The play is in three acts, normally taking a little less than three hours to perform, with two 10-minute intermissions. The title is a pun on the song who is afraid of the big bad wolf from Walt Disney's three little pigs substituting the name of the celebrated English author Virginia Woolf here Martha and George repeatedly sing this version of the song throughout the play who is afraid of Virginia Woolf won both the 1963 Tony Awards for Best Play and the 1962-63 New York Drama Critics Circle Award for Best Play. Three acts, Act 1, Fun and Games, Act 2, Well for Just Snatch, and Act 3, The Exorcism. Question number nine. What are the last words of Vanity Fair? Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Vanitas. Vanitatum, Amen, or let it be. Your option B, that is Vanitas, Vanitatum, is the answer. Vanity Fair is, a English, is an English novel by William Makepeace Thackeray, which follows the lives of Becky Sharp and Amelia Sedley amid their friends and families during and after the Napoleonic Wars. It was first published as a 19 volume monthly series from 1847 to 48, carrying the subtitle Pen and Pencil Sketches of English Society, reflecting both its satisfaction, sorry, satirization of early 19th century British society and the many illustrations drawn by Thackeray to accompany text. It was published as a single volume in 1848 with the subtitle A Novel Without a Hero, reflecting Thackeray's interest regarding literary heroism. It is sometimes considered the principal founder of Victorian domestic novel. The story is framed as a puppet play. The book's title comes from John Bunyan's Pilgrim, Pilgrim Progress, a dissenter Allegory first published in 1678. The novel at last concludes with a pessimistic statement of oh, vanitas vanitatum.
Question number 10. In his elegy, O Captain, my Captain, Whitman has mourned the death of Option A, Abraham Lincoln, Option B, Edward King, Option C, Arthur Hug Claw, and Option D, Arthur Halleck. So here, option A, option A, Abraham Lincoln is the answer. O Captain, My Captain is an extended metaphor form written in 1855 by Walt Whitman about the death of American President Abraham Lincoln. Emphasizing grief and sorrow, the form was first published in the pamphlet sequel to Drum Taps. It is as an elegy of mourning poem. In which work the character of Willie Loman appears? The grass, managery, farewell to arms, death of a salesman, or desire under the elm? Here the answer is option C, death of a salesman. Let's see the highlighters. Death of a Salesman is a 1949 stage play written by American playwright Arthur Miller. It won the 1949 Pulitzer Prize for Drama and Tony Awards Best Play. It is, he is 63 years old and unstable, insecure and self-deluded. Question number 12. Who is the author of the line, Shall I compare thee to a summer day? Options are Christopher Marlowe, William Shakespeare, John Keats, and option D, Robert Browning. So here the answer is William Shakespeare. The line occurs in Sonnet 18, opening line. William Shakespeare, English playwright, poet, and actor, widely regarded as the greatest writer in the English language and the world's greatest dramatist. He is often called England's national poet and the bard of Avon. He has written 39 plays, 154 sonnets, and two long narrative poems. He was born on 26th April 1964 at Stratford upon Avon, Warwickshire, England. He died on 23rd April 1616. At the same place where he was born, that is Stratford, Warwickshire, England. Which of the following works does not belong to John Webster? Women, Beware Women, The White Devil, The Duchess of Malfi, The Devil's Law Case, and here the uh, option A is the answer, that is Women, Beware Women. Women Beware Women is a Jacobean tragedy written by Thomas Middleton. He was, it was first published in the year 1657. Women Beware Women tells the story of Bianca, a woman who escapes from her rich home to elope with a poor Leantio. And it's a tragedy. The setting is in Florence. Options BCD is written by John Webster. Let's move to the next question. Question number 14. Samuel Butler's Hudibras. It is option A, a comedy of manners in two acts. Option B, a more heroic narrative form. Option C, a novel set in rural background. Option D, an essay dealing with social reforms. Here, the answer is Option B, a more heroic narrative form. Let's see the highlighters. Hudibras is an English mock heroic narrative form from the 17th century written by Samuel Butler. The work is a satirical polemic upon roundheads, Puritans, Presbyterians, and many of the other factions involved factors involved in the English Civil War. The title comes from the name of a knight in Edmund Spencer's The Fairy Queen, who is described as not, do, not so good of deed as great of name, and more huge is the strength than wise in work. 
Hootie Brass was written in an iambic tetrameter, enclosed couplet with surprising feminine rhymes. The work was published in three parts, each divided into three cantos with some additional heroic epistle. During the Civil War and published in three parts in 1663, 1664 and 1678, with the first edition encompassing all three parts in 1684. It is possible that a fourth part was planned, which would have given the work 12 parts in imitation of Virgin's, Virgil's Aeneid. Let's move to the next question. George Eliot was the pen name of Mary Ann Evans, option A, Mary Isaac, option B, Annie Bronte, option C, and option D, none of these. Here the answer is Mary Ann Evans, who is the writer of Middle March. Mary Ann Evans, known for her pen name George Eliot, is an English novelist, poet, journalist, and translator. She was born on 22nd November 1819. She died on 12th December 1880. Here, al alternatively, Mary Ann or Mary Ann. Her nickname is Mary Ann or Mary Ann. She wrote seven novels. Most of the novels set in provincial England and known for their realism and psychological insight. It was written in Victorian age. 16. Number. Who among the following is not a British writer? D. H. Lawrence, Ernest Hemingway, Thomas Hardy and E. M. Foster. Here the answer is Ernest Hemingway. Ernest Miller Hemingway was an American journalist, novelist, short story writer, and sportsman. He won the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1954. He published seven novels, six short story collections, and two non-fiction works. Born on July 21, 1899, at Oak Park, Illinois, U.S. He died on July 2nd, 1961, at the age of 61, at Katchum, Idaho, U.S. He won Pulitzer Prize for Fiction in the year 1953. La Allegro means silent man, greedy man, lazy man, and cheerful man. Your answer is cheerful man, happy man. La Allegro is a pastoral poem by John Milton, published in 1645 poems. La Allegro, which means the happy man, is Italian. Option, question 18. James Thomas wrote The Castle of Indolence in blank verse, heroic couplet, Spenserian stanza, and octosyllabic couplet. Here your answer is option C. And let's see the highlighters. The Castle of Indolence is a poem written by James Thompson, a Scottish poem, Scottish poet of the 18th century in 1748. The poem written in a Spenserian stanza. Oliver Goldsmith is Oliver Goldsmith's first poem, The Travellers, is written in blank verse, heroic couplet, octosyllabic, octosyllabic couplets or terja rima here the answer is heroic couplet the traveler or a prospect of society is a philosophical poem by oliver goldsmith in heroic verse of an augustan style is discussed the causes of happiness discusses the causes of happiness and unhappiness in nations he begins the poem by extolling the happiness of his brother Henry's simple family life. Goldsmith began writing The Traveller in 1755 while he was travelling in Switzerland.
Question number 20. Who called the 19th century the age of prose and reason? Dryden, option B, Johnson, option C, Arnold, option D, T.S. Eliot. And your answer is Arnold, Matthew Arnold. Let's focus on highlighters. Matthew Arnold stated that the 18th century was the age of prose and reason. It is so because no good poetry was written at that age and poetry itself became prosaic. The 18th century is also referred as the Augustan age or neoclassical age. Who was the national poet of Scotland? William Blake, Robert Burns, Walt Whitman or Thomas Chatterton? Here the answer is Robert Burns. Robert Burns, also known familiarly as Robbie Burns, the national bard, bard of Ashire and the Plowman, poet and various other names and epithet, epithets was a Scottish poet and lyricist. He is widely regarded as the national poet of Scotland and it celebrated widely was celebrated worldwide. Let's see the next point. He was born on 25th January 1759, Alloway, Ashire, Scotland. He died on 21st July 1796 at the age of 37 at Dumfries, Scotland. He is regarded as a pioneer of the Romantic movement. Johnson wrote a play to pay for the charges of his mother's funeral. Which one? Here, option A is Irene, option B, Rassels, option C, The Life of Savage, option D, Shakespeare. The history of Rasselas, the history of Rasselas, princess, prince of Abyssinia, originally titled the Price of Abyssinia, a tale, though often abbreviated to Rasselas, is an epilogue about bliss and ignorance by Samuel Johnson. The book, original work, the book's original working title was The Choice of Life. The book was first published in uh, April. 1759 in England. At the age of 50, Johnson wrote the piece in only one week to help pay cost of his mother's funeral, attending to complete it on 22nd January 1759, the eve of his mother's death. The Way of the World, written in 1700, 1701, 1755, and 1800. The option, correct option is option A, that is 1700. Let's see the highlighters. The Way of the World is a play written by the English playwright William Congreve. It premiered in early March 1700 in theatres in London, sorry, Lincoln's Infield in London. It is widely regarded as one of the best restoration comedies and is still occasionally performed. Initially, however, the play struck many audience members as continuing the immorality of the previous decades and was not well received. It was set in London. Dr. Johnson has written about lives in his life, Lives of the Poets. Option A-15. 51 B option, option C 52 and option D 53. Here the answer is 52. Lives of the most eminent poets, English poets between 1779 to 81 alternatively known by the shorter title Lives of the Poets is a work by Samuel Johnson comprising short biographies of critical appraisal of 52 poets, most of whom lived during the 18th century. They were arranged approximately by date of death. Who was Hogarth? A poet, essayist, scientist, painter. Here option D. 
a painter is the correct answer. William Hogarth was an English painter, printmaker, pictorial, satirist, social critic and editorial cartoonist. He was born on 10th November 1697, London, England. 22nd October 1764, at the age of 66, he passed away from the world and his death occurred in London, England. Patron was Mary Edwards, who lived 1705 to 1743. Friends, by this we have completed day 4's MCQs as well. There is a good news that now you can get PDF from us and you can join a WhatsApp group as well. If you wish, you can contact me in this number which is being highlighted here. My name is Roshni and you can make a call to me in this number. Thank you so much. All the best for your upcoming examinations. We wish your success wholeheartedly. Thank you.